Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top 10 ways to troll your Magic the Gathering opponent, mainly in EDH, but also in casual. These are combinations that make your opponents really angry. And I've seen many people be quite upset and even refuse to play against these certain combos. So the first combo is Michael Sin Latex, 6 mana, artifact, all permanents or artifacts in addition to their other types. All permanents that aren't in play, spells and permanents are colorless. Players may spend mana as though it was mana of any color. And Vandal Blast, which is a uncommon from Return to Ravnica. Destroy target artifact you don't control. Pretty nice. But the overload means that you may cast this spell for its overload cost. If you do, change the text by replacing all instances of target with each. So you're destroying each artifact you don't control for 5 mana, which you have at this time. And you are board wiping pretty much every single land, every single enchantment. All permanents are being board wiped on every opponent's side while you get to keep everything that you want. Uh, this is a very interesting combo and it will get people to rage quit because if pulled off successfully you will be the only one with anything and you can take your time to kill your opponents off. The more opponents there are the better this does in terms of a combo. All right now let's go to another combo uh, for multiplayer. The I guess we're going to focus on EDH this video but we have another video for modern and standard Fractured Identity and Leveler. So I'll read Leveler first. Leveler, whenever it comes into play, remove your library from the game. It is a 10-10. It costs 5. Fractured Identity, free a white and a blue. Exile target non-land permanent. Each player other than its controller creates a token that's a copy of it. So you play out the Leveler, then you play out this. Yes, you do need 10 mana and you remove your library from the game. Then you get rid of the leveler and you put a leveler for each opponent and you remove their library from the game. And because you just ended your turn, you will be the last one to draw. Therefore, each opponent is drawing into a library of zero, meaning they lose the game. So this is a very unique way to win. Next, uh, Mentor of the Meek. And the Locust God, the Mentor of the Meek is 2 and a white. Whenever another creature with power 2 or less enter the battlefield, you may pay 1 if you do draw a card. The Locust God reads, flying, whenever you draw a card, create a 1-1 one, one, blue, red, and insect creature token with flying and haste. Draw a card. Uh, 2, a blue, and a red, draw a card, then discard a card. It is a 4-4. Four, four. So what you're going to do is you're going to have both of these in play. And you're going to cr start creating these Locust Insects. And because they pop in play, you pay one, you draw a card, and you get another Locust Insect. And then you can continue to do this. You get a lot of, just a ton of 1-1s. One and they all have flying. And they, you get a ton of card draw. And the beauty of this is you slowly grind them out. So it's kind of a eternal mechanism. And I like those kind of win conditions. You don't want to win too easy, in my opinion. Now, Sahili Ra, there are many things you can do with her. A liquid metal coating to tap it, target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. So Sahili's minus two ability reads, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So it is a target artifact. So you can create Sahili as a target artifact, and then she can copy herself, and then the new Sahili will take the place of the old Sahili, and this is important because you want the free loyalty counters, and then this can be repeated infinite amount of times because the new Sahili is actually an artifact. And you're just copying more artifacts. Now, this is an infinite loop. 
and if it was just this combo, you would upset your opponents because the infinite loop would never end. Next, uh, what's more upsetting than infinite times? Uh, infinite turns. Time sleeve, a blue and a black, sacrifice five artifacts, take an extra turn after this one. The assembly, which is also very nice, it costs six. Flying at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control no Fopters other than the assembly, return it into its owner's hand and put five one one colorless artifact creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. So essentially, you need five artifacts, and this provides you five artifacts while allowing the card to come back to your hand to give you another five artifacts the next turn. Very good combo because eventually you're going to win because you also get to draw cards. This card doesn't actually slow down the progress. Once you set it up, you have infinite turns to do whatever you want, and you also have infinite card draws. This is a very devastating combo because if there's something that players do not like, it is infinite turns. Next, Marlin of the Morning and Stranglehold. So Marlin reads, players can't draw cards. So instead of players not being able to draw cards, at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player loses free life, searches his or her library for a card, then puts it into his or her hand. So essentially, it is a version of Demonic Tutor. Stranglehold means your opponents can't search libraries. So that is a perfect combination in EDH. You grab it and they can no longer draw. You will continue to draw, but they can no longer draw. And your draws are actually very good because you're demonic tutoring, essentially, for whatever you need. Assuming that your opponents are exhausted at this point and they don't have too many good cards in your hand, it creates a unique situation where they need creature removal. And you can protect her, so you'd need to protect her. And but you can, after a few turns, it gets pretty depressing because you can find protection for her by searching. Next, uh, one of my favorite cards is Archangel of Froon. I think I've been very. Uh, if you watch my channel, you know that that is one of my best speculations I've ever had. The Archangel is a free double white flying lifelink. Whenever you gain life, you get a plus one plus one counter. The Spike Feeder comes into play with two plus one plus one counters. Pay two, remove a plus one plus one counter. You can get to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. But more importantly, remove plus one a plus one plus one counter from it. You gain two life. So whenever you gain life, you get a plus one plus one counter on each creature. So you get infinite life and you get an infinite Archangel in terms of power and toughness. Now, the combo is kind of interesting. It does leave a gap. I mean, infinite life is not what it used to be. Uh, there's lots of cards that now reset life totals or even exchange life totals. But I always like this combo because it's very on curve. As soon as the Archangel hits, the Spike Feeder can go berserk. And you're in green, which is a mana acceleration heavy color. The classic, Sanguine Bond and Exquisite Blood. So the interesting history about this card is when one of them is gets reprinted, the other one goes up in price. And this has happened a few times already. So Sanguine Blood, free double white, uh, double black, wow. Uh, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then Exquisite Blood, four in a black, whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. It is an infinite circle loop. Uh, there's many ways that you can set off this loop. Uh, I mean, many, many black cards are loss of life. I'm trying to figure out which one, or gain life, actually. You might play this in a black-white deck. So I love this combo. It's very simple. It's very symmetrical, which I appreciate. And, you know, there's blood here. There's blood there. Both of them cost five. Both of them are enchantments in black. Both of them can be searched up and tutored in the black decks. Now, an interesting way to win is Blood Chief Ascension, one black enchantment at the beginning of each end step. If opponent lost two or more life, you may put a quest counter on it. So assuming you can get it up there, whenever a card in a graveyard put, is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if the Blood Chief Ascension has three or more quest counters, you may have that player lose two life if you do gain two life. So Mind Crank is a beautiful card from New Phyrexia 2. 
Whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So that's a, a cycle. Now, once you get these two online, you just mill out your opponent. Most times, they actually probably will die before they get milled out, but it is a double win. You get infinite life, do infinite life loss, and get to mill out your opponent infinite times. So pretty good, in my opinion. Pretty good. And lastly, uh, we have Amatoa, the Fate Shifter, and Feldon Guardian. Feldon Guardian has lots of possibilities with that card. Uh, the minus one ability reads um, XL target permanent you own, then return it to the battlefield under your control. Feldon Guardian obviously resets permanents, which includes Planeswalkers. So it can reset this card and you can have infinite blinks. And that's a really, really good combo, especially if you have entered the play abilities. Uh, whenever a creature enters a play, you get to do X, Y, Z, uh, and you can go on forever. Plus, you curve right into it. You curve right into the Feldon Guardian. So, yeah, it's a great combo. You have the EDH Commander already, so it's not like you have to tutor for it. And tutoring for the Feldon Guardian is very easy in these colors because you're black. Anyway, bye guys.